everybody. My name is Mai and this is Nicola. So we're going to uh, present how uh, robots can learn sequences of policies by using intrinsic motivation and task hierarchy. So the idea is that we want a robot to learn from sensory motor data uh, interacting with its environment. For instance, here we have a robot arm that can move around objects, the blue and green ones. And uh, on this uh, interactive table, it can use these objects to control the sounds and play the DJ. We can also consider a mobile robot here that can move around and bump into red obstacles. And it can also move around uh, blue objects and push them onto their spots. So um, classically, previous works um, have been looking at how robots can learn this mapping from an outcome space and a policy space. And they've been using, uh, for policy space, um, policy primitives, which are um, parameterized functions with a parameter theta that is of a dimension n. Um, in our work, we'd like to um, have addressed two challenges. First is to look at the outcomes um, and uh, use multitask. Instead of a robot learning only to move a green object to one specific action, uh, space, uh, to one specific uh, position, it needs to learn how to move the object um, to any position on the table. Also, we don't want to consider one only kind of um, outcome, but a lot of different kind of outcomes, like how to produce sounds. So our task space, our outcome space, will be the union of all this. So we have composite tasks. The second challenge that we want to address is to use policies of any kind of complexity. So we don't want to bound our policies in an n-dimension space. We want uh, the robot to be able to use any uh, sequence of actions. So we consider that our policy space is going to be pi to the power of the natural numbers. To summarize, we will um, explain how our robots can learn a mapping from a composite continuous space to a space of infinite dimensionality for the action space. In order to help uh, uh, the robot learning uh, in a such environment, it would be a good idea to uh, enable it to discover and exploit the task hierarchy of those uh, environments. For example, in the left-hand setup, the robot arm experiment, the most complex task is producing sound, and it is composed of two um, simpler tasks, which are uh, moving the green object, object 1, and moving the second object, uh, the blue object. And in order to move those objects, the robot uh, first need to be able to move its arm around. So you can see this tree-like tree uh, structure uh, between the tasks. And on the, uh, on the red uh, hand setup, which is the uh, mobile robot setup, you could see that the most complex task is uh, storing an object on a specific spot. And uh, in order to do that, the robot first needs to be able to move the object around while avoiding obstacles. And to move object, it needs to be able to first move itself while still avoiding obstacles. So to um, summarize our goals in this uh, study is to enable a robot to learn from sensory motor data multiple tasks in multiple task learning. And for that, uh, we want to um, allow it to be able to adapt the complexity of its actions to the task at hand and for that to use sequences of motor policies. Our idea is that it can use the hierarchy between tasks to bootstrap its learning but uh, this hierarchy and relationship between tasks is not given in advance it needs to discover by itself and learn the relationship between tasks. The methods we propose to use to solve this uh, problem is to have uh, robots explore its environment and, and specifically 
the possible task relationships to know which ones are relevant in a goal-oriented manner. For this uh, exploration, we use a heuristic called intrinsic motivation. So using those uh, methods, we developed an algorithm which is called SGMSHT, which stands for Socially Guided Intrinsic Motivation for Sequence of Actions for Hierarchical Tasks. It learns by episode, and each episode starts by first choosing a, a task uh, to learn and the strategy, which is a method it will use to uh, learn this task during your episode. And at the same time, it will choose a model, which is uh, the uh, specific task hierarchy it will use to uh, uh, ease this learning. And then it will apply this, uh, this strategy uh, with the constraint of the specific uh, model. It will build um, a sequence of uh, features, which will be either uh, policies or outcomes. Then it will execute this, uh, this sequence and produce uh, uh, complex motor policies and uh, uh, possible uh, outcomes in your environment. It will use them to update its outcome and strategy interest mapping, which will be used to uh, select future uh, tasks to target and strategy uh, to, to use in the future. And then it will also uh, update its memory by uh, uh, recording everything it, it, it achieved and also update uh, the possible uh, model, the possible uh, hierarchy representation. So one of the key ideas that we introduce in this paper is how the robot can um, build up um, more and more complex tasks. And for that we use um, a representation of complex tasks as combinations of previously learned skills. For instance, in our robot's arm uh, experiment, um, the robot can move the object, green object, from position x0 to position x1. And to, uh, in order to do that, it can represent this task as a composition of two subtasks. The first is to move its arm first to um, the initial position of the object x0, and then move its arm to the position uh, x1, the desired position. From these two subtasks, then it can infer which are the um, policies, so it builds a succession of two um, uh, primitive policies. Um, so we propose two versions of this algorithm. The first one is SJMPB, where it uses a static set of feature spaces. So the robot is given in advance um, the spaces of object position, uh, uh, arm position and motor primitives and it needs to learn and represent using these spaces a hierarchy of tasks. From there it uh, uh, generates sequences of uh, previously learned outcomes to see uh, to build more complex tasks. Um, Building from this hierarchy of tasks, it can then uh, learn and represent sequences of actions. Another approach is to use a dynamic set of feature spaces. So the idea of the version time of our algorithm is to construct first simple models using a dynamic set of features. So in the mobile robot experiment, the robots can learn simple um, models like how the object position can be related to the robot position and how the robot position can be related to uh, the wheel motor commands. And uh, it can connect uh, those simple models to build a hierarchy of tasks from nested models. For instance here it can uh, relate these two models and say that the object position will be related to the motor command of the wheels. From these um, ideas, it can use planning to infer sequences of actions. So, uh, for instance, to be able to, um, to move the robot position from position R0 to R1, it can say that using planning, it means that the robot can um, needs to go to intermediate positions 
and from these intermediate positions um, infer um, motor commands and get a sequence of action. This idea can also be applied to higher level tasks. For instance, if it needs to move an object, uh, the blue object, from position x0 to x1, it can infer uh, intimate positions of the, um, of the object and from the um, inferred uh, robot positions, it can infer then uh, intermediate um, motor commands. Here we plotted the results of our learning. So through time, we put the mean error of the robot for uh, the tasks placing the object on the spots. And we see that our algorithm, which is in green, makes lower error than the other compared algorithms. To see what's going on inside the learning process, we plotted with respect to time, the percentage of times um, each uh, model is used for learning in a goal-oriented manner. So we can see in first, uh, in the beginning, uh, the robot concentrates on the blue model, which is how to control its own position. And once it has learned that, it moves to a more complex task, the red model, which is trying to control the object position. And it's only after these uh, two models are learned that it concentrates on the higher, uh, more difficult task, which is how to place the object on the spot. You can see from these results that the robot can learn complex tasks with better accuracy and faster. And it learns also in a developmental manner, concentrating on simple tasks first and on complex tasks in the end. So if we look at the um, robot arm experiment, we can see here uh, two different algorithms that were tested. So our algorithm SGMPB and another one SGMSATS, which is unable to uh, both discover and explore the task hierarchy. So in this um, here in this video, we can see that it's trying to push to push the to put the bo both objects, so the blue the, the blue and uh, green circles, on the corresponding crosses, and you can see that they are using the same Patterns. So, for example, they are trying first to move the blue object and then uh, move the green one. And you can see that uh, our algorithm able to use the task hierarchy is uh, much more precise. In the distance with the uh, with the goal is uh, is lower. And uh, if you look at the at how the robot is capable to adapt the complexity of its uh, policies to the task at hand. Uh, we can see here uh, an histogram of these different sizes of, policy, of complex policies chosen with respect to the uh, target task. So here we have the more simple task, which is moving the, uh, the, the arm around. You can see it's choosing mostly simple, very simple policies, size 1 and 2. And if you look for the for other tasks, and especially for the most complex task, Omega 4, which you produce in sound, it's using mostly uh, size 4 policies, which are really complex. So. Uh, we can see that it's capable of uh, learning uh, better the complex tasks, as you saw before. The distance with the target is uh, is lower, and also it's capable of adapting the complexity of its policies to the task at hand. As a conclusion, uh, in this in this paper, we uh, we show that uh, using a strategic and intrinsically motivated learning algorithm is a good way to tackle the learning of complex tasks, hierarchical tasks using um, complex motor policies. And exploiting the, this task hierarchy is uh, beneficial for the learner. It enables him to learn uh, better in, um, in a more appropriate manner. We proposed a unifying architecture able to use uh, the, like, using both methods, which was implemented in two different fashions. First, the GMPB, which is using fixed uh, possible task hierarchies and then able to uh, optimize the full uh, sequences of uh, features and time which is uh, using uh, dynamic hierarchies and the planning to build those sequences but which is unable to optimize those uh, full sequences uh, on one time in the future we we plan to implement a full version of the SGIM SHT uh, algorithm by combining both the those uh, variants 
by using planning to bootstrap learning and especially the early learning process as Cam does and using uh, optimization of full uh, feature sequences as SGMPB is doing in order to reduce the time complexity uh, involved by the planning stage. And we need also to design a common experiment as to compare those, uh, all those implementations.